Are you looking for a little bit of extra performance from your Google ad campaigns? Well, Performance Max, otherwise known as Pmax, may be for you. The sales pitch from Google is that you can basically just plug your credit card into Google ads, leave Google to do the work, and all you need to do is figure out how you're gonna spend all that money. Mm, well, it's not quite that simple. In our experience, Pmax can work really well for some businesses, but you have to use it in the right way. For example, one of our financial clients had been running Pmax prior to coming to Exposure Ninja. Their CPA had been averaging about $2,300 from Pmax. We took over their ad account, set up a new Pmax campaign following the principles that we're gonna be talking about today, and as of making this video, their CPA through Pmax is $28. So unsurprisingly, Pmax is not a set and forget it solution. You need to know how to use it in order to get the most out of it. And that's exactly what we're gonna cover today. All right, first up, we're gonna go through some basics of what is Pmax, some of the pros and cons from our experience, and then we're gonna share our ninja tips for getting the most out of it. Now, in simple terms, Performance Max or Pmax is a Google ad campaign type that allows you to run ads across all of Google's ad inventory. So you can run ads on Google Search, you can run ads in Gmail, in Maps, on YouTube, and through the display network but all from the same campaign type. All you need to do is provide Google with headlines, images, and videos. It will then do the rest, create your ads using different combinations of these assets, and show them around the internet. On paper, this is a fantastic idea for everyone. You, the advertiser, get to just work on the creative and leave Google's fancy machine learning to do all the boring ad placement stuff. Meanwhile, Google gets your credit card details. One of the main selling points of Pmax is that it looks at your visitors across the entire conversion funnel. So it can choose to run ads at people at different stages of that conversion funnel in order to maximize conversions. For example, you don't need to set up a remarketing campaign because Pmax ads can include remarketing. If Pmax is used properly and it suits your business and your products, it can be fantastic. For many of our clients, it's the most profitable type of Google ad campaign that we run. Just look at this one here. You can see that this Pmax campaign is generating conversions at about £6.87. Well, that's even outperforming their branded search campaign, which is generating conversions about £8.45. Think about that for a second. This Pmax campaign is full funnel advertising, advertising across all of these different types of inventory, and that is doing better than advertising for people who are searching Google for the company's brand name. So how does Pmax actually work and how much control do you as an advertiser have? Well, Pmax is centered around this concept of assets. Now, assets are the different pieces of creative that you give the campaign. For example here, assets can be headlines, they can be long headlines, they can be ad descriptions. All of these are types of text asset, but you can also add image assets. These might be used in display ads, for example. You can add square image assets. These might be used in Discover. You can add logos and you can add video. We'll come back to that later on. By giving Pmax all of these different assets, it can then pair different headlines with different descriptions. It can run ads using your logo, without your logo, it can run video ads, it can run image ads, across all of these different ad placement types. It then reports back to you which combinations seem to be working best. And by the way, if you can't face creating your own assets, Pmax will even create assets for you, including video. And we're gonna come back to that later on as well, trust me. Now, in general, we found that using Pmax campaigns works best for our e-commerce clients. That tends to be the type of business that gets the highest return on ad spend from Pmax. Having said that, we've also seen it work really well for some B2B companies and lead generation or service businesses. And in fact, we've run Pmax for all sorts of companies from furniture retailers to axe throwing to software to legal and financial. But in order for Pmax to work effectively, the key is there has to be enough conversion data to train its models. So you need to make sure you've got conversion tracking set up properly, and you need to be running enough budget through your ad campaigns to be generating conversions for the machines to learn what works best. 
If you don't put enough budget through it, it takes too long to figure out what it's optimizing for and spends a lot of money in the process. So whilst Pmax isn't right for every business, in general, our PPC team does test it for most businesses that we think it could work and will often run it against regular search campaigns. Now, before I go through our tips on how to improve the performance of your Pmax campaigns, let's talk about some of the more general pros and cons. Firstly, the automation. This can work really well. Campaigns can adapt quickly to changing user behavior, and this means you don't necessarily need to be driving them all day, every day. It also offers automated optimization across each of the different ad placements, meaning less time spent refining individual ads. For Exposure Ninja, that means that we can manage a greater range of campaigns, meaning we can be better value for our clients. Another benefit is that Pmax can be really easy to set up. Google has always had a fascination with making its ad products as easy as possible to use. I remember back in the day of Google AdWords Express when local businesses could automatically set up their ad campaigns. It meant you didn't need to be an expert in running Google Ads to have a campaign set up. And for Google, that means more business credit cards hooked into their system. The automatic testing of different combinations of ad creative is also really cool. And this allows you to test loads more different iterations of your ads than if you were doing this manually. You also don't need to run separate retargeting campaigns because Pmax does this automatically for you. So that's the good stuff. But what about the stuff that Google isn't telling you in its press releases? Well, Pmax is a bit of a black box. You don't get that much data about keywords and what keywords are driving the most conversions, meaning you can't then take that data to inform your SEO or your content marketing strategy. If you were going to be really cynical about it, you'd say that Pmax was one way for Google to dump its garbage ad inventory, mainly display ads, let's be honest, and package it up with all the best ad inventory and sell it to advertisers in one place. And this means that if you don't know what you're doing, the black box of Pmax means that you can end up spending a whole bunch more money than you need to without really understanding what's going on with performance and what could be better. The ability to target negatives or exclusions is also pretty limited compared to regular campaigns. For example, at the time of making this, it's quite difficult to negative target certain keywords. Let's say that you didn't want your Pmax campaign to include branded traffic, for example. Well, that's really easy to do with a regular campaign, but with Pmax, it's much more difficult. You may also not want to target certain demographics, but Pmax doesn't give you that level of granularity and control. You also have no control over the search versus display allocation. Search traffic is usually more valuable, so you'd be happy to pay more for that traffic because it's people who are actually looking for what you're doing versus display ads, which are people who are just cruising around the internet and may or may not be thinking of your product or service. But you've got no control with Pmax to say, I want more search and less display. It's all up to the black box. It also takes time for the Pmax machine learning to learn and optimize the campaigns. This can be very disconcerting, particularly if you don't have much patience as you're watching your CPA be way too high for comfort, hoping that it's gonna come down over time. The fact that usually it does doesn't make it feel any more comfortable in the meantime. There's also currently no support for things like remarketing lists or custom intent audiences. Although this may change over time as Google does seem to be rolling out features that allow advertisers to share their knowledge, experience and data with Pmax to help it get through that learning stage a bit more quickly. All right, so what are the tips from the Exposure Ninja PPC team on how to get your Pmax campaigns performing most effectively? Well, firstly, the performance of your Pmax campaign is going to be majorly influenced by the performance and the quality of your assets. Remember, these are the headlines, the descriptions, the call outs, the CTAs, the images and the videos that you give Google in order to build these ads. Now you might be thinking, videos, Tim, I don't have any videos for my product or service. Well, you need to get some because otherwise Google is going to automatically create videos for you. And if we're being charitable, we'd say these are hit and miss, where hit is basically passable and miss is just 
no. And you can get videos made or you can contact Exposure Ninja if you need some help with this. But it's a really good idea to have your own video assets rather than rely on what Performance Max gives you. And we'll come back to automatically created assets in a minute. Once you've added all of these assets, you can preview what your ads are gonna look like across different devices. Now this isn't exactly what they're gonna look like because obviously Pmax is gonna choose different products and different benefits and ad copy according to the audience. But you can see approximately what these are gonna look like. Now two other things that you're going to want to give Pmax in order to get your campaign set up are audience signals and search themes. Audience signals allow you to upload an audience list. Now, you may be used to doing this in Facebook, in meta ads, where you can upload an audience that you want to target with your ads. Well, audience signals in Pmax are slightly different. You're not uploading a list of people that you want to target with your ads. You're uploading a list of people to show Pmax what your audience looks like. It's then gonna look at this audience and use it to influence its targeting. Of course, the best audience to train Pmax from is your customers, because these are the people that have the most intent. But you also need to balance this with giving Pmax enough audience data so that it can spot the trends. So you might have a large email list which you could use instead, which is gonna give more data, and whilst it's not gonna be as high intent, the fact that there is some intent there and the fact that it's a larger list is gonna allow Pmax to build its audience targeting more quickly. Now, something that Google has added to Pmax is search themes. Search themes are topics that you think your target audience is going to be looking for. Now, these aren't keywords. Remember, this is a completely different way of advertising. So we're not saying to Google, I want to advertise for these phrases. Because when you're targeting keywords, even if you're using broad match keywords, Google's only gonna be showing your ads to people who are searching for those keywords or those topics. Well, with search themes, it's slightly different. Again, we're suggesting to Pmax, these are the sorts of topics that we think our audience is searching for. Pmax can then choose whether or not to use these in its targeting. So these search themes and the audience signals are gonna be combined by Pmax to go out and start building your audience. Now it's worth saying here that even if you give it loads of granular information about your search themes and your audience signals, you're still going to want to allow Pmax a bit of time to experiment and find different audiences for your ads. Another thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you're splitting up your Pmax campaigns if you're selling to different types of audience or people that are interested in different topics. So for example, we've got a client that sells furniture for people with pets. This is pet proof furniture. And what we've done is set up separate Pmax campaigns for pet owners who own cats and pet owners who own dogs, because we want to make sure that we're showing cat owners pictures, assets, headlines about cat-proof sofas, and we want to show the dog owners pictures, assets, headlines about dog-proof sofas. But we'll also set up separate asset groups for different types of asset. For example, here we've got one for a company that sells picture frames, and we've got a separate asset group for the generic professional assets, i.e. the professionally taken pictures. But we've got another asset group for UGC, user-generated content, because the type of customer, the type of target audience that might respond better to UGC ads, i.e pictures taken by the general public that maybe aren't so professional might be skewing younger. And we want to help Pmax by differentiating these two asset groups to allow it to find the right audience for each one. Okay, so ninja tips based on our experience running these sorts of Pmax campaigns. And by the way, if you want some help with your Pmax campaigns, the team here at Exposure Ninja offer a free PPC review. This is where we'll analyze your Google ad campaign performance and we'll suggest ways that you can improve it. What you need to do to request this is go and request our free website and digital marketing review at ExposureNinja.com forward slash review. We'll then analyze all of your digital marketing across all of your channels and make some recommendations for you. If we spot that PPC through Google is a real focus area for you, we may offer you a free PPC review where we can take a look in more detail at your PPC campaign. Now, not everybody is eligible for this free review service, so you have to go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review to request your free website and marketing review today. Okay, so the Ninja Tips. 
The worst thing you can do with Pmax is jump in, do bare minimum of setup, allow it to create automatic assets, and then just set and forget it. Just leave it to it, hoping that the algorithms are gonna optimize your profit. Not gonna happen. These algorithms are tuned to maximize Google's profit, so you need to give yourself the biggest chance possible of success. And that means knowing where to give Pmax freedom and where to give it more input. So usually you're setting Google a target cost per conversion or target ROAS, which you want the Pmax campaigns to optimize for. You need to set these based on your knowledge of your business, your historic performance, what your profit margin is, the performance of previous ad campaigns that you've run. Don't rely on Google's initial recommendations. Google is incentivized to suggest a lower target return on ad spend because it wants you to spend as much to get each customer as you possibly can. And this is where your knowledge as a marketer really comes into play. You might know, for example, that running ads during a particular season costs you more than at other times of the year. Pmax won't know that. So you might decide to set a lower target ROAS or a lower target cost per acquisition during those times of year than the rest of the year. You'll also need to keep your wits about you during this initial testing phase as well. For example, if you know that your customers just take a little bit of time to convert, or you know that you have seasonal fluctuations, you're gonna to want to keep this in mind during the initial testing phase. And this is where being slightly detached and keeping a cool head can really do you some favors. Just because your brand new Pmax campaign isn't performing as well as some of your more dialed in traditional search campaigns at your worst time of year, doesn't mean that Pmax is a waste of time for your business. It might just be that those seasonal fluctuations are at play. And this brings us on to our next tip, patience. It's so common to see new Pmax advertisers immediately panic once they see that CPA way higher than they wanted. For example, in this ad account, which is primarily made up of Pmax campaigns, look at how the cost per acquisition, in this case, the red line, started really high when we first took on this account. We were paying $1,200 per conversion, but within a month, that cost was down to $84 per conversion. Within two months, we were down to $63, and today we're at just under $27. But this is over a six month window, and you can see that level of patience was required, not just to train the Performance Max algorithms, but also to bring in new assets based on what we were seeing the highest performing combinations were. We've also found that you've got to be smart around this use of audience signals. Sometimes giving the algorithm fewer audience signals actually results in better performance so that it can test and find the best audience for you. This is similar to what a lot of meta advertisers find if they're spending huge budgets, actually just throwing loads of budget at a really broad audience and allowing the algorithms to optimize to find the right pockets of customers can sometimes work well, but it can also be high risk. So it's best to have someone who's used to running these types of campaigns make that call. Now it's really important to make sure that Pmax is being fed accurate conversion data because it's gonna be using that conversion data to optimize everything from the ad placements to the ad assets to use to the different combinations to the audience targeting. So it goes without saying that your conversion tracking in GA4 needs to be spot on. GA4 is also gonna give you a bit more data about how your Performance Max campaigns are performing than even Performance Max will. Now our next tip is all about these automatically created assets. We saw earlier how Pmax will create text assets and URL targets and even videos automatically for you if you let it. It's a no from us. Yes, you can link your website to Pmax so that it can scrape your text on your site to put together ads, but this is a really bad idea. Any decent marketer is gonna be able to come up with better ad copy than Pmax can. So use custom images, use custom video, use custom text, and use the landing pages that you have designed for your ad campaigns wherever you possibly can. So Pmax, loads of potential, but it needs to be used in the right way. This is not a set and forget ad channel. 
You need to know what you're doing, making sure that you're feeding it the right assets and splitting out your campaigns in the right way if you're gonna get the most of this. Now, of course, you also wanna be making sure that you're driving your traffic to a website that's gonna convert. If you don't do that, it doesn't really matter what you do with your ads, you're never gonna get the highest ROI possible. So check out this video on how to optimize your website for conversions.